Welcome to For the Quantum Grammar Shoot, the only podcast of its kind on the internet that I'm aware of. I'm your host, Colin Jason. I've met Colin Glass. You call me Jason. I've been doing this for a while now. I've been doing this for a minute. I'm well over 100 episodes. I know I am. Well over 100. Not to mention the 600 plus videos on my YouTube channel. And the dozens of TikTok videos that I've started putting up. So I got a lot of content out there. Been doing a lot of things. Making a lot of strides. Um, recently put out a video to address all the people that contact me and want me to syntax documents or take care of cases for them. And uh, I literally said there are two ways to go about uh, handling cases if, if you want me to help you handle a case in the fiction court system number one learn the grammar yourself handle it yourself and I'll coach you or help you through it if I can certify your level of grammar knowledge or number two you pay me to go to your physical location and take jurisdiction over your case and just become the authority of whatever's going on and I did say that if you can think of the most expensive attorney take their salary or whatever they make and times that by you know four to six times the amount and that's the amount you would have to pay me to do that to take time out of my life because this is not something I normally do to take time out of my life to go to your location and deal with your life my first suggestion and recommendation is you handle your life you learn the grammar you do those things yourself taking authority over your your vessel construct rather than me and wouldn't you know it I had someone email me and ask me how much it would cost to have them fly me out to wherever they are to handle and take jurisdiction over their case unreal I couldn't believe that someone would actually ask that so let's put it in perspective here friends and neighbors I looked it up on Google uh, so far, the most expensive attorney in the United past tense United States, I think they make fifteen hundred dollars an hour. Fifteen hundred dollars an hour. So, going by what I said, if you take the most expensive attorney and times that by four to six, let's go four. Let's say I'm five thousand dollars an hour that I would need to be paid to handle your case. That's per hour. That's not including airfare. That's not including rental cars, per diem, food, all that types of stuff. All right? And if I come in and handle your case, there's no guarantee that it's going to have the outcome that you think it will. So, you can do that. If that's what floats your boat, if you'd rather have me come in and handle your life for you, and you got that kind of money, contact me, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. We'll set up a a video consultation, and uh, I'll decide whether I want to do that or not. Because even if you do have that kind of money to invest in having me do that, doesn't mean I'm going to take your case. It just depends what the case is. What happened? Because if you... Let me, let me, let me see if I can give an example here. Because um, if it's something like uh, a contract that you agreed to pay for something and you defaulted on your payments, something you agreed to do, something you contracted to do and you defaulted on the payments... That's not something that correct sentence structure is going to help you with because you're the one that's in the wrong. That's how it works. Now, if it's someone coming after you for penalties, late fees, and interest and things like that, that's different. All right? That can be handled with correct sentence structure. But if it's a flat fee that you agreed to pay something for a car, for a house, whatever. You agreed, you signed the paper 
and agreed to make a payment every month, every month, every month uh, on time and you just don't pay, that's your fault and correct sentence structure is not going to help you because you agreed to do it and now you're reneging on that agreement. It's just like if someone borrows money from you and they, you know, they borrow a hundred bucks from you and they agree to pay it back, uh, 10 bucks a week for a few weeks until they get it paid off and they pay you 10 bucks the first week. Then they pay you 10 bucks the second week and then you pay, they pay you five bucks the next week and say, Hey, you know what? I'll, I'll double the payment next week, you know, get back on track. And then they just decide not to pay you. It's the same thing. Who's in the wrong? They're in the wrong because they agreed to it and now they're defaulting on their payments. You see what I'm saying? Or if it's like a DUI thing where you're drunk driving and now you're facing jail time because you have prior DUIs, you shouldn't have been drinking and driving. Okay? That's just common sense. That's public safety. I went into this in another video about public safety. When it comes down to it, that's pretty much what most of the stuff is about. Most of the fiction laws are about. It's public safety. And to me, it's common sense. Don't speed. Don't drive drunk. Don't drive while impaired. Uh, fulfill your contracts. It's pretty easy. It's just when someone's trying to take advantage of you that that's where correct sentence structure comes in. If someone's trying to rip you off that's where correct sentence structure comes in and can help you out. So, if you meet those requirements, I have to know the details of your case. We have to have a face-to-face. -face. We have to have a sit-down and a face-to-face. -face. And I'm going to be asking you some tough questions. And I'm going to look at your face and I'm going to search you, your, your, your expressions, to see if you're giving me a line of BS or not. And I'm going to need to see your paperwork, of course. And all that stuff. A lot goes into it. So, there you go. Just putting that out there. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk about is the fact that everybody, I don't care who you are, everybody makes mistakes. I am no exception. For example, when I go on vacation or travel with my wife... We always forget something. There's always one thing that is forgotten. Always. And it doesn't, I mean, to me, it just does not serve anybody. It doesn't benefit anybody to get upset about a mistake or to dwell on it. It's how do we handle the mistake that matters. Like, you're, if you're a martial artist in you get in, you know, you do a competitive match and you lose, you get knocked down. It's not getting mad about being knocked down and dwelling on it. It's what do you do after you get knocked down? What happens then? How do you handle it then? Like, what do you do? Do you dwell on it and get depressed and get mad and get angry and let it eat at you? Or do you get up and adjust your game plan. Find different ways to do things. Correct it if you need to. Correct your, your style if you need to. These are all it's all learning uh, processes. And, uh, I don't see any reason to get angry or to get negative about it. It's a lot of people do that. You know, they'll they'll get negative about it. They'll be like, ah, oh, nothing ever turns out right for me. Oh, it's just so stupid. Bah, 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 bah. Huh. Those are the people that blame everybody else for, for what they're doing. It's always somebody else's fault. Always somebody else's fault. Never their fault. Never. It's, it's the reason why some people like to delegate things out so they don't have the blame if something goes wrong. It's almost like they're purposely giving people <laughs> rope to hang themselves with. 
and that, and that is true in some situations. All you can do is the best you can do at any given time. Your 100% one day may not be the same as your 100% the next day. Or to put it another way, the quality of your best effort may differ from day to day. Just depending upon how you are that day. What your energy levels are. What your concentration is. So on and so forth. It's, you know, it fluctuates. All you can do is the best you can with what you have at any given moment in the continuum. And how other people respond to that, their kuleana to that, is them. You can try to predict things like that. Um, and you can be successful with it if you look at someone, you know, the way they behaved over time. You can kind of predict how people are going to react or... or how they're going to interact with you. But it's never a sure thing. So it's best just to worry about what you're doing. As they say, you know, mind your own business because nobody can mind your business like you can. (laughs) It's true. Oh, it's true. It's damn true. Um, So that's the other thing I wanted to touch on, that everybody makes mistakes in some way, shape, or form. Nobody is perfect. That's like why that's why like guys like RJG just they make me chuckle. Because they talk a talk like, oh I'm so humble. Um I'm I have humility. I'm learning too and blah blah blah. But yet they won't correct their grammar. They won't even address the fact that their grammar is atrocious. There's mistakes all over their documents. And they want everybody else to bow down to them. Goofiness. When David and Russell walked into those courtrooms and claimed to be federal postal judges, who gave them that authority? Who authorized them? Nobody. Nobody. So why would it be different for anyone else? You just got to know what it is you're doing, that's all. Authority comes from knowledge. Period, end of story. So why would it change for other people? Why wouldn't it be the same, rule one, rule equal? Just throwing that out there. It's a little strange, don't you think? Like the guy that Russell, the story that Russell told when, um, what was it, during that one seminar with him and that full colon Gordon colon Gonch? Where Russell told the story of some 15 year old kid who became a federal postal judge after he's been quoted on record as saying it takes 15 years to study and become a federal postal judge. Well, that kid must have started studying as soon as he popped out of the womb. Because at 15 years old, supposedly, according to Russell, the kid was a federal postal judge. Ridiculousness, goofiness. Friends and neighbors, I implore you to use your logic. Use your logic when you're thinking about these things, when you're auditing and uh, doing forensics on the, the things that people say. Just think about it logically, and it'll soon become apparent what the real deal is, what's really going on, and the way things really are, rather than the way some people would like you to think they are, in order to have some sort of control over you or to make a buck off of you. That's about it. That's all I got. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you in the next one. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like and I'll do the same and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. If you'd like to support the channel, click on the join button underneath this video. There are two tiers of membership. Uh, The second tier has access to exclusive content not available to the public. Once again, 
Thank you for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Turn the notification bell to all so that you don't miss any of my premieres because I do post on a very consistent basis. There are over 500 correct sentence structure videos for here you to study on this channel. My gift to you, my fellow mankind. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one.